Welcome to Handheld Gaming Reviews. Today we're going to look at the Ambenic RG Cube. I ordered this shortly after the initial reviews on YouTube were released and I have had it for a few weeks at the time of recording this video. The first thing I want to address are the concerns around the screen black light bleed issue that was reported in the review units. My unit was ordered within a week of those initial reviews going live, in fact I probably should have waited as the price of the RG Cube has dropped a good 50 bones since buying it. You could argue there is a tiny bit of light bleed around some of the edges of the screen, in my unit at least it's not overly noticeable and certainly doesn't detract from the gaming experience. For me, the screen looks great, gets dark, goes bright. The 1x1 one one aspect ratio works well for retro titles as well as GameCube and PS2 games. Hand fill and durability. Similar to my views on the RG35XXSP, the RG Cube feels like it could take a few hits if it was dropped. My only concern would be the screen if you didn't have a screen protector on it and something hit it at just the right angle. Despite the almost toy looking aesthetic with the color scheme I have, the quality feels great. With the active cooling solution, I also have not noticed the cube get warm while playing and have yet to actually notice the fan noise. Button feel. The buttons feel great. Some might not like the circular d-pad but for me I like it. I haven't found any issues with accidental diagonals but having said that I've been playing mostly GameCube and PS2 games using the thumbsticks on this thing. The ABXY buttons feel great especially for the price of the cube. The speakers. The speakers are what I would term serviceable. They aren't fantastic if you're comparing them to something like the Steam Deck. They do an okay job, certainly not impressive in my opinion. Then again for the price I'd argue they're fine. Battery life. The battery life on this thing is amazing. I'm not sure if that's just an Android thing, but I can totally believe the claims of 9 hours or more on retro titles like NES or Game Boy games would be achievable. Usability. I can't speak for the included emulators or ROMs as the general advice on a number of channels suggested installing a bunch of emulators from scratch. There is a great guide put together by Retro Game Core. I'll link that as well as some other videos I use to help me out in the description below. The setup takes a lot of work. I'm sitting at around the three hour mark and I still haven't finished setting up a few things. For those of you that like to tinker, Android Retro Gaming is a good time soak. On that note, this is my first time using an Android gaming device. It has its advantages in that you have a web browser and any Android apps that you might want to use on the device uh, there through the Play Store. It's essentially a mini tablet with a built-in controller. So far, my preference is for the Linux-based devices. They just seem to be a little easier to use and for me personally to set up. I totally see others having the opposite experience if you're very familiar with Android. To be clear, this system isn't hard at all to use. There are plenty of guides out there that walk you through the setup. And if you're happy to weed through the negative comments, there's always one or two people on Reddit that actually answer the question you might be asking. Performance. GameCube and PS2 games run great on this thing. I think that's really what this handheld was designed for. I mean, Cube is in the name, right? I must admit, I skipped the GameCube when I was younger. I was more of a PlayStation kid myself, but after playing this thing, I wish I'd given the GameCube a chance back then. I'll be on the hunt for a second-hand unit at some stage to add to my retro gaming collection at home. I haven't tested beyond GameCube or PS2 games, but to be honest, those are just about the last generation before you start to see 16 by 9 aspect ratios becoming the norm. So for a 1 by 1 aspect ratio device, I think this thing is perfect. You do need to tweak the settings occasionally to get some games to perform well. The scaling factor as well as using the appropriate core is sometimes required and that's still a learning experience that I'm working my way through. For the most part though, once you have the system set up to some form of baseline default for each emulator, you'll find a lot of games just work without issue and the games you need to tweak settings for become the exception rather than the rule. I should say I ordered the console only and set up the apps from the Retro Game Core Guide so I can't really speak to the usability of the included Ambinic front end with or without the Ambinic included SD cards. The price. So I paid around 300 Australian bones for this thing delivered from AliExpress. Looking at the AliExpress website now, I've seen it as little as 250 bones. Is it worth it? Totally. I've been really happy with this unit, even at the 300 that I paid. The fact that this thing runs Android may also be a big bonus for people who also want to get a little more out of a handheld that they're dropping 250 bones on. The quality for the price is excellent. And when you think about it, this is at a price point that's cheaper than a Nintendo Switch Lite. Although, to be fair, not by much. Who is this thing for? I think this thing hits two types of consumers. The first and most obvious is anyone in the retro gaming hobby. With its 1 by 1 aspect ratio screen and performance for the 250 Australian dollar mark, it's not a bad price. That's the equivalent to three new release games and gives you access to thousands of retro titles. The second type of consumer is somebody who might be into Android games, doesn't want to use their phone, doesn't have the budget for an Odin or a Neo, and is interested in giving some retro titles a go. Before we get to the end of this video, consider subscribing if you like my content. I've got a goal to hit a thousand subscribers and I'd really appreciate it if you help me get there. So in conclusion, this device seems to achieve its hopes and dreams, provided those hopes and dreams were playing PS2 and GameCube games on a compact handheld. I've been really happy with it, then again I haven't had experience with other Android retro handhelds, but for the money I think you can't go wrong with the RGQ, particularly if you're looking for something with a square aspect ratio.
If you've made it to the end, I appreciate you taking the time and hope you enjoyed this video. I've got an RG40 XXV that's on its way and a Mayo A30, if I'm pronouncing that right, also sitting at home ready for review. So if retro handhelds are your thing, keep an eye out for more videos. Thanks for watching and catch you in the next one.